Hi guys, Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create a cute satin slice pendant. Now I did a test piece already and so this is an example of what we're going to be doing where we take a texture stamp and we basically colour it in using clay. And now I'm going to be using one of Helen Braille's texture stamps and this one is called the Conga Line. As you can see here. Now it needs to be perfectly clean. I've already cleaned this up. Uh, here. But you want to have a nice clean texture stamp, which is quite important. And textures that have a, um, have varying textures throughout it and kind of images through them work the best. So for instance, um, while this one would work, it's one continuous repeating pattern and so it's not going to end up looking quite as interesting as one like this. Also, you want to go for rubber textures, that's quite important. You need textures that you're going to be able to roll up and move around and um, generally contort into different shapes to help you release the clay from them. So any texture stamps that are stiff and you can't do that with are not going to work. Also, you want a texture that has a flat texture where the um, inny parts are on one plane and then the raised parts are on another plane. Hopefully you can understand, hopefully I explain that, right? But you don't want um, varying um, depths in the texture. That's also quite important. So any uh, typical commercial rubber stamps will work really well for this. So I'm going to be using this one. So I'm popping that to the side. And now you want to choose your colors. I'm going to be using some nice bright colors today. So I'm going to be using Primo Fuchsia some Primo Green and some Primo Orange. I've also got some black and white Primo off to the side. Now this is a little bit on the bright side for me so what you want to do is you want to probably this isn't an exact science because uh, it doesn't really matter too much. You essentially want to take some white and you want to mix maybe about uh, two parts white to three parts uh, colour. That's the general colour I go for and you just do that with the magenta, with the uh, fuchsia and with the green. Orange you leave the colour it is. Okay and I'll just mix these up quickly. Okay so you should end up with some colours that look like this. And you can see they're just a little bit softer on the eyes and they don't uh, clash because they're kind of a more pastel look. And this is why I didn't um, change the orange because that one already has a fairly pastel look to it. So anyway those are the colours. Now with your texture stamp you want to plan things out. So I've got orange, green, um, pink, black and white to work with. So in this section over here like I did in the uh, test sample what I'm going to do is I'm going to have these lines that go through being orange. Um, I'm going to have the flowers pink. I'm going to have the bits in between the flowers uh, green and this is going to be the center of our pendant. And then I think this part over here should be black and white and this part over here should be black and white to kind of frame uh, the colours. So that's how I planned it. Um, you can plan it any way that you want but that is how I'm going to be doing it. But it's important to think about what you want it to look like uh, before you get um, to creating the actual size and slice. So I'm going to work with the colours first and I think I will choose pink to start with. So you want to work with very small amounts to start with. I'm just going to roll that almost into the shape of the petal. You need a very small amount of clay for this. Okay, I'm just going to smooth that into the gap. Okay, and now you're going to have some areas where you get the pink into the wrong spot. So just take something like a little craft knife and you can just scrape that pink out of the area where you don't really want it. And I'll do another one and I'll just show you a few more so um, I'm gonna go down the side and show you what I do over here to clean this up and I find that it's easier to work with a small amount of clay at any one time and then smooth that into the right space okay. then go back around those edges and just gently see if you need to clean it 
and then I'm just going to show you what happens if I overlap on a line here it's very easy to clean up and now I'm starting with the pink first because this is a very specific uh, part of the texture that I want to be in this color uh, when it comes to the green what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, basically just press all over it doesn't matter if I overlap with the pink because you're only going to be able to see the parts that are in the texture if that makes any sense and, and you'll see that when we shave off the clay so I do the flowers first and then I'll cover the remaining uh, texture okay so this bit over here and we're probably going to overlap into the uh, line as you can see here and so all you do is you just take your blade and very carefully cut and lift that out and that should clean it up nicely so I'm going to continue doing the flowers I might not do the whole thing because I just need this area essentially to be covered uh, and then when I've done the flowers I'm going to show you how I do the green okay so here are our flowers so now we are going to add in our green which is pretty simple so you just take your green Just place it into the areas uh, where the pink is and if it overlaps the pink that's fine because we're going to be shaving off the top part of the design anyway so that we're just left with the bits in the grooves so if it overlaps uh, that's fine it won't actually make any difference and you'll see that when we actually uh, do end up shaving it so you'll just continue overlapping and that's basically all there is to it. You do the specific part of the design first, if there is a specific part that needs to be coloured. Uh, and then you fill in the rest uh, with the next colour. Now these ones I'm going to be doing black and white. I'm going to be doing it similarly. Um, and so when I've done these two, uh, along with the green, then I will show you how to put in the orange lines. You do the orange lines first. Ah, excuse me, last. Uh, and then I will show you how to clean this up so that we can turn it into a beautiful veneer. Okay, and here we are. We're just about done. So now I want you to find one of these lines and just run your blade along the length. And this will just trim away our excess and then we're going to go on the other side because we need to clean this up so we can put our orange inside here and then I'm just going to see if I can brush that out Yeah, it doesn't matter if this top part gets, top part gets dirty. Uh, that does not matter. Okay. Just make sure to clean up this line as much as possible so that there's no overhang uh, bits. It's quite important. So I'll just go around one last time. There we go. Then I'm going to grab a piece of orange. Okay. And just warm that up. And we're going to roll that out into a nice long line. And everything I do with this one, you're going to repeat with the other uh, line here. If it breaks up like that, I'm just going to have to squish that back together. And this is a fairly long process. I would recommend maybe doing it on a tile um, in front of a TV program or, I don't know, find something else that you can do while you're doing it because it's, it's a little bit on the tedious side. It can be very relaxing. Uh, but just keep in mind, it's a fairly long process doing all of this. Okay, and then you're just going to feed that. into the spot that it needs to go in. I'm just going to press that into place and I need to add a little bit more because I missed some there. So I'm just 
description wall. Okay, and everything you do here, repeat with the other one. Okay, and there we go. So now I just want to clean up the sides. And all you're going to do is you're just going to run your blade along the edge. <gasps> and this will just help a little bit later on when we're doing the trimming. Now bear in mind this is just one uh, design that you could use. You can use many, many different texture stamps for this. Now, before we do anything else, we have to do a very important step. This is one of the most important steps. You need to take a piece of plain printing paper and you need to burnish this thoroughly. It's going to get everything stuck into the texture stamp. It's going to... Um, Get rid of any air bubbles, places where we might not have squished the clay in. It's going to get stuck down to the rubber stamp. It's going to bind all of the pieces together. And it just means that less of it's going to come out and cause issues when we are uh, trying to trim it. Now, it still might not be perfect, but, but it definitely makes a huge difference. Okay, just lift that up. And I'm just making sure that I pressed everywhere. It needs to be well stuck down. And if you combine all of these pieces together, that really helps. Okay, and I think that's about fine. All right, now you need to have some sort of wet rag. I'm using a wet wipe off to the side because we're going to be using a thin, flexible tissue blade. And every single time we do a slice, we're going to give it a clean. And that just helps a lot. Okay, so I'm just going to start here. We're going to gently shave that. Put that away. Clean your blade. The cleaner your blade is, the cleaner it will cut. Therefore, the better your image will look. Okay, because you get clay stuck on there. It also means that the clay is less likely to stick uh, to your blade which can also cause issues later. Now don't cut too deep. We can go very slowly with this. There we go. And you can see we're starting to reveal the pattern there. And so I'm going to continue very slowly doing this. You want to work very slowly, very methodically. And then I'm going to show you how to clean it up after we've done most of this. Okay, there we go. All finished. Now it's important that the uh, grey of the text stamp shows up. Um, just looking for my blade. Here we go. Uh, it's important that the grey of the texture stamp, texture stamp uh, shows up and doesn't have any clouded bits uh, where the clay. Uh, it's still on top of it, so like over here you can see it's a little bit grey. That needs to come off, you need to make sure that it is clean. And now you have to do this with your blade, because I find that if you rub something such as 99% alcohol, um, things like that, I find that it causes all sorts of issues. So I would, you just need to take some time to make sure that um, the stamp is clear. Sorry about the noise in the background, a storm just blew in. So if you have any parts that are missing, just press and smooth. Okay, so I'm going to be using a sheet of pearl white as my backing. And this has been run out to about a millimeter and a half thick. Lay that over the top of your design. Grab your plain piece of printing paper again and burnish thoroughly. This is very important. If you haven't burnished it properly, your clay will not, your clay inside your texture stamp will not stick properly and it won't come out the texture stamp. So you really need to make sure that you press this. And again, sorry about the noise there for a little while. Okay, so you really need to make sure that you burnish this. And I'm going to just take this flip because I want this, I don't want to have to put a backing on. 
so I'll just flip it so that it's sticking to that printing paper and I'm just going to burnish the texture stuff and the reason I'm doing it with a piece of paper instead of doing this is because my fingers drag against the uh, rubber so just burnish that down you want it stuck onto that piece of paper as best you can and it needs to be stuck well to that clay cannot emphasize that enough now, this bit we're going to do very, very slowly. Pick up one corner and I need you to bend it back as far back as you can, like slide it along. Just very gently walk it up. Do not rip it up. Very slowly you want to bend it. And you're still going to get a little bit stuck in your texture stamp. It's fairly normal. So long as it's not huge bits, it's not a big issue. There's a bit. If you do have a bit that comes up, you can just gently lay your stamp back down and stick it. And then continue walking it up. Okay, and I think that's it. So you can see here, we did have a little bit there that didn't lay down. Teeny little bits, but for the most part, it laid down pretty much perfectly. And that's the most stressful part. Okay, and I'm just going to quickly trim that. Okay, and that bit scrap because it's got bits on it, but most of this pearl white can just go straight back into the um, pearl white wherever you keep it. Okay. And if you burnished it correctly, you should be able to see pretty much the texture uh, on the parts where you did not have uh, your satin slice. Okay. Just going to trim it. There we go. Okay. So you can see it looks really pretty very beautiful. So now we're going to leave it stuck to our uh, printing paper because our backing will be nice and smooth and we're going to choose uh, a cutter to use. Okay, So I'm going to be using this uh, rounded square donut which I think will look quite pretty. just want to find a nice spot for it. I'm just going to find a spot for it. Uh, and then on the other side, I'm going to be using this uh, oval donut. So let me just find the right spots for these. Okay, so I changed the donut for one with a smaller hole. Uh, and now we're just going to take them, press straight down. Okay. And I'm just making sure that I've cut cleanly, straight through. stuck in there and we can also just use our um, plate to pick this up there we go all right and that's basically it I'm just going to quickly try to smooth off this crack over here as much as I can okay. and there we go we've got two really pretty interesting pieces now you might find that there's a little bit of um, stuff around the edges you can just take your blade and gently trim that, or you can bake it and we can just scrape it off. It's very little, uh, but I do like to just quickly use my blade to very gently trim it off. There's barely any, so don't have to worry about it. Okay, and these ones, they just don't have it. Okay, and so now I'm going to bake these for a full hour at Primo's recommended temperature, and then when they're done, uh, basically, I think that will be it. I don't know if we're going to shine them up or anything like that. We'll have to see. I might want to give them a little sand, but probably not. I'll probably keep them exactly the way they are because I really like how they look. 
Okay, and so once I've just quickly finished up cleaning in here, I'll pop them in the oven and then when they come out, I'll show you how they look. Okay, so I've changed my mind very quickly. I don't think I want to bake them flat. I think I would like to dome them. So all we'll do is we're just going to gently peel these off the paper and I'm actually going to use a blade to help me with that. This does mean we're going to have to give the back a bit of sand just to get rid of any shiny spots but that will be fine because the back's nice and clean. Just pop that quickly to the side, quickly lift this one up. And it's a good chance to get rid of the uh, excess on the edges. <sighs> there. Okay. Oh. Okay. Now I'm just going to be using this um, dish that I use for the stuff. And you can see there's alcohol ink on the edges, but that's fine. It's not an issue. I'm just going to place this on top. Gently tap that down. There you go. And that will just make it look more interesting. And I think this one I'm going to probably bake flat. So that one will get baked flat on the piece of paper, and this one will get baked domed. Okay, so they're out of the oven. And this one is the test piece that I made. So you can see here is a different variation. So long as you get the texture on either sides of the satin slice, uh, you could have just the satin slice and then just a plain colour as well. Or you could just go with the satin slice like I've done here. But I don't want to waste this. So now we're going to give them a very quick sand just to remove any bits and pieces. So I'm going to start with a 600 grit piece of sandpaper. And I actually have decided that I'm going to... Um, Varnish them, but I'm going to use some resin to do that. Okay. So I'm just going to sand them from a 600 all the way up to a 1000. Uh, and as for the um, the back, I might give that a little bit of a sand as well. But in general, that looks all right. And then I will come back and we can uh, varnish them. Okay, so I finished them off. You can see they have a little bit of a sheen now. So if you wanted to, you could leave them like this. This looks quite well. Give them a little bit of a buff and they'd look quite pretty. But I do want to put some resin on them. I might not put resin on all of them. We'll see. I'm going to do this one first. <clears throat> and so I'm going to be using uh, Teresa Pandora's Deep Shine today. Because it's a nice thin resin. Just going to use a nice fluffy brush. Just want a little bit there. And I'm going to brush that over the surface. And now you don't need a lot. I don't want it to have a dome or anything like that. I want it to just uh, cover the surface. So, um, like a varnish, but not like a glossy dome. So I'll just continue smoothing that over. I want to be able to still feel the uh, raised areas after I'm finished with this. So I'm just putting a very thin layer of this resin over the surface. And you can see how it brings out those colours nicely. Okay, and there we go. You can see it has a nice shiny finish. So I think I'm probably going to do that with the others. Um, and then I'm going to put them into the UV light for about 15 minutes and then I'll show you what they look like. Okay, so they're just about done. So let me just bring them out of the light one at a time. And here you can see how it gives it a beautiful shiny exterior. Now if you don't like that, you can just go for the sandy buffing, but I know that a lot of you like this really uh, shiny glass-like effect, which is quite pretty and it looks great in photos as well as you'll have seen in the beginning. So that's that one. Bring over the next one. Here's the next one. This is the flat one. Personally, I prefer the domed version, but this one wouldn't have looked very nice domed. And then finally, we have the one uh, where we just have the southern slice down the middle, 
and then the rest of it is um, is uh, just textured pearl white clay. So that's another thing that you could do as well. So that is basically it for today's tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please do let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to support this channel, please do consider becoming a patron. Uh, I'll leave a link to my community in the comments below, in the uh, description below the video. I have lots of different videos on that platform that are exclusive for patrons. You could also buy them on Etsy, uh, but it's a better deal on Patreon because for fifteen dollars a month, you'll have access to over two hundred. Uh, tutorials so please do check that out as it really does help me out and as always I will see you in the next tutorial bye for now